winter Sunday morning here in early March. We're still having a little bit of uh, chilly weather up here, but hopefully this week you know, things are going to warm up for us and we're going to see much warmer temperatures uh, by midweek, maybe into the possibly into the 60s. So anyway, we're looking forward to that, but that means hopefully spring is on its way and I know we're all looking forward to uh, the nicer weather. Before I begin my sermon today, um, I'd like to make a couple of announcements. Uh, you may have already seen on Facebook, uh, Brother Vic Ross, he made a post for um, uh, Miss Bobby Woods, the young lady we've been praying for uh, regarding her issues with her, her, her uh, leg or knee and that. Uh, she's going to be having uh, surgery this Tuesday to remove some fatty tissue behind her knee. So uh, please keep her in your prayers as she goes through the surgery. Everything will go well and she'll have a speedy recovery. And she really appreciated all the cards and that she received from everyone. And uh, so if we can continue that, I know she would appreciate receiving those going forward as well. So uh, please keep her in your prayers. And if you're able to, please uh, send her a card. I know we're, we're thinking about her as she goes through uh, the surgery and all the things she's dealing with, with with regard to this. The second announcement is more of a personal nature. Um, a friend of mine, a very close friend, a brother in Christ, um, who was um, like a father to me. Um, when, you know, when I first became a Christian, he was, uh, you know, became very close friends and very um, instrumental in my life and really was very close to me. Mr. Andy Cherney, you know, um, he passed away last Sunday morning. Um, he had really not been sick. He did contract COVID a, a little while back, but after getting trying to try and get over that, uh, he had a stroke. And um, recently, I like think within the last probably two weeks, I think it was about, and then he had, I guess that he had air in his brain due to the stroke, and he was just not able to recover from that and went into a coma. And, you know, he's more like in a vegetable state, and he was on life support um, for a while, and then the family decided to take him off life support. And he still, you know, lingered on after being taken off life support for a few days, and then uh, passed last Sunday. But he was a dear brother in Christ, and um, just asked he be with uh, Andy's family, uh, his wife, Miss Carol, who's uh, struggling with um, issues of her own. He was a primary caregiver for her. And now she's uh, in a facility where they can take care of her. But she'd, of course, like to be at home, but she can't now because Andy's not with us. So please keep Carol and uh, all of Andy's family and friends in your prayers. They'll have, the, they'll have the strength and comfort to get through this difficult time. So I would appreciate that. Today I'd like to um, talk about a topic related to a song that I really, really like and love. Um, I'm using a uh, sermon outlined by Brother Mark Copeland once again, and I really love the song, Take Time to Be Holy. And so I came across this uh, sermon outline, and I, I thought it would be good to share it with everyone. There's a lot of good things we can learn from the songs that we sing in worship, and I think this is an excellent song that we can study and learn from. So that's what we're going to do today for a little while is uh, look at the song, Take Time to Be Holy. I'm also going to post an a cappella version um, of the song, both with the, with the sermon video, and I'll also put it on Facebook as well, so people can enjoy that as well. So let's get into the lesson for today, the sermon for today. You know, our songs and worship are designed to instruct as well as praise. You know, for we know from... Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, for, you know, in them we, we teach and admonish one another through songs. You know, and also in that same verse, by them the word of Christ can dwell in us richly. So, songs are important and we need to always remember to try to, you know, sing songs and praise, and praise to God whenever we have opportunity. So the song, Take Time to Be Holy, is a very familiar song to most people. I know I have been singing it for a long time, and it was one of my favorites when I, when I became a Christian, and I just love that song and really became attached to it. 
It was written by a man named W.D. Longstaff, and it was composed by uh, George C. Stebbins. And if you're familiar with the um, songbook Hymns for Worship, it's song number 118 in that book. So, You know, we know that certainly the children of God are to be holy. We know that. If we look over at 1 Peter chapter 1, over at First Peter chapter one for a moment. In verse fifteen, there we're told, "But as ye, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation." So we are to be holy in our conduct, as that verse tells us. You know, even as our, our Father who calls us is holy. So we learn how to be holy from our Father and, of course, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, indeed, holiness is to be pursued, for without it, one will not see the Lord. And we see that in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Let's take a quick look at that. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, we're told there, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So we need to pursue holiness, because without it, we will not see the Lord. You know, in this lesson today, we'll let the words of this song serve as the basis for our study. You know, and let's take note first that the, the song assumes that we need to take the time in order to be holy. You know, we, in the song, the, the, world, the words, the world rushes on, are there. You know, it's expressed, this, these words are expressed in the beginning of the second verse. And certainly, our lives are hectic and fast-paced. Everybody can... You know, agree upon that. We all live a very hectic and fast-paced life, just the way the world is today for most people. You know, we and we fill our our lives are filled with activities that consume our time. When you think about it, especially with families who have children, and you know all the things that are going on with anything from school to sports to, you know, of course. What should be most important is our church activities, which worship and Bible study and doing things of that nature. But our lives can be very full and hectic. Um, but the thing we need to remember in all of this, and we don't usually think about this until a person passes away, maybe at a young age or something tragic happens where somebody loses their life, but you know, we know that our lives are but a vapor. Let's look at James chapter 4. I think we're all very familiar with this verse. James chapter 4, and beginning in verse 13 of that chapter, and we'll read 13 and 14. We're told there, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy, and sell, and get gain. Whereas you know not which, which shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanish away, vanisheth away. So we know that our lives are but a vapor. And before we know it, you know, time will have slipped by, and this life will be over. It will be gone. So we know from this song as well that it takes time to be holy. It just doesn't happen, you know, immediately or overnight. It takes time to be holy. And this is a key presumption upon which the song is based. You know, holiness must be pursued. We saw that in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. You know, holiness is also the fruit of service to God. And we see that in Romans chapter 6 and verse 22. But holiness must also be perfected in us. Let's look at 2 Corinthians for a moment. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, there in chapter 7 and verse 1, we're told there, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So holiness must be perfected in us. You know, if we're not careful, the time that we need to develop holiness will be gone. And we will not have that opportunity. So let's think about these things. That it takes time for us to, to achieve holiness. This should be a priority in our lives to take this time. So how do we do that? How do we take time to be holy? And we do that, first of all, by spending time with the Lord. It makes sense that, you know, that we should do that. The song encourages us to abide in him always and to spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. What a wonderful thing that is. Who, who else would you want to spend time with than other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Wouldn't that be wonderful if we were able to do that? Yeah, and we need to. We can't do so directly physically, but we can through the Word of God and through study about our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And also, this means to do so, it involves prayer. You know, we need to pray to God. We need, as the song says, speak off with thy Lord. And forgetting nothing, and forgetting nothing, his blessings to seek. So we need to pray to our Lord, our, our Lord and Savior, to our, to our Father in heaven. And it's very important that we do this. Another way we spend time with the Lord is to, as I said, through the Word of God. So we can feed on his word, as the song says. Let's ask the question, do we take time to be with the Lord? You know, through prayer, are we taking that time? When the Lord is ready to intercede in our lives, are we taking that time to, have, to go to him in prayer? We see this in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Also, are we taking the time in the word of God? Which, of course, testifies of our gracious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's look at John chapter 5 for a moment. John chapter 5 and verse 39, we're told there, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are and they are they which testify of me. So we have to spend time in the Word of God, of course, which testifies of our Lord and Savior. When that scripture I just read, of course, was those are words spoken by our Lord and Savior Jesus. You know, we friends and brethren. We cannot overestimate the importance of finding the time we need to be with the Lord alone through prayer and through the study of the Word of God. Another way that we can uh, spend time is to, to be able to spend time with others, our brethren, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And of course, this includes fellowship with them. In the song, it says, make friends of God's children, which is referring to this fellowship. You know, we know that early Christians continued in this steadfastly when we read that in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. And this helps to ensure faithfulness and steadfastness. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 3 for a moment. Hebrews chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. And we're told there, Take heed, brethren, 
lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the, de to the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So by spending time with our brothers and sisters in Christ, we can ensure faithfulness and steadfastness in our lives. Also, this includes the idea of assembling together frequently. We, we, we're very familiar with, this, with the verse or the scripture, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, which talk about this. So we need to make sure that we are attending the worship services whenever they're available. And I'm sure most of you have seen that we're going to go back to in-person worship once again at the beginning of April and April 4th. And I believe that's gonna be the first week that Terry will be back preaching with us once again and his sabbatical will be over. So we look, we look very much forward to that, being able to um, be together in person once again and of course, we're looking forward to have Terry and Jeannie back with us and working with us in doing God's work. So, you know, we have to have the fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And this also includes, when we say spend time with others, it also includes service to our fellow man, those who are maybe less fortunate. In the song, it says there, help those who are weak. You know, this is a duty enjoined upon Christians. Look at, let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, there in verse 14, we're told, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So this is a duty that we have as children of God, as a Christian, is to help those who are weak, or you know, provide service to our fellow man. You know, sir, it's also a service toward all, and especially our brethren as well. We have a lot of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are struggling in many ways. You know, could be financially, emotionally, spiritually. And we need to be there to help them as well. We see this in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. And we also need to make sure we're ministering our abilities to one another. Let's look at 1 Peter for a moment regarding regards to this. In 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning in verse 10, we're told there, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we need to use the abilities we have to be able to minister to others. So, brethren and friends, we need to be careful that we're not so busy that we don't have time to be with our brethren and to help others as we have opportunity. Let's always remember that. You know, as a person takes time to be with the Lord and his people and in service to them and others, a transformation slowly takes place in our lives when we do this. And then we receive benefits. There's benefits of taking time that are talked about in the song as well. 
you know, we will receive blessings from doing this. We will be blessed. First of all, in the song it says, be calm in thy soul. So we are going to be blessed with inner peace and happiness. That's a wonderful thing. You know, and this is achieved through frequent prayer. We have some Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And also through our frequent meditation upon the Word of God. Let's look at Psalm chapter 1 for a moment. Psalm chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, we're told there, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So when we <clears throat> are able to frequently meditate upon God's word, this will provide inner peace and happiness for us. Another line in the song says, Each thought and each motive beneath his control. We're going to be blessed with a renewed strength by doing these things, by taking the time to be holy. And we achieve this through our relationship with Christ. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4 for a minute. In Philippians chapter 4, And in verse 13, we're very familiar with this verse. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So by having that relationship with Christ, we receive that renewed strength. We also receive that strength through the indwelling of the Spirit, which we read about in Romans chapter 8, verses 12 and 13. Another blessing or benefit of taking time to be holy is the we will realize the increase, increase in God's love. Think about this. There's a, song, a line in the song that says, led by his spirit to fountains of love. So we will have an increasing realization of God's love in our lives. It's a manifest, manifestation of of the Spirit in our lives, which we see in Romans chapter 5 and verse 5, which also whose fruit produces love. And we see this in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. So, brethren and friends, shouldn't this be enough motivation for us to take time to be holy? I certainly think it, it should be. Another benefit of taking this time is that we're going to be more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is certainly something I, we all should be you know, working towards trying to achieve, be as much like Christ as we possibly can. This is, of course, the ultimate goal of discipleship. In the song we're told, like him, thou shalt be. You know, this was explained by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's look at the book, in the book of Luke. In Luke chapter 6. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 40, we're told there, The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Of course, this is um, being explained by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is also foreordained by our Father in heaven. We see that in Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. 
And this is a transformation that is noticed by other people. Another line in the song says, Thy friends and thy conduct his likeness shall see. So people notice this transformation in us when we take time to be holy. And of course, we know this is a result, once again, of spending time with Jesus. Let's look at Acts chapter 4 for a moment. Acts chapter 4 and, and in verse 13. We're told there, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and he took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. So, as a result of Peter and John spending time with Jesus, explains a lot. And if we're able to spend time with Jesus, we can achieve blessings as well, just as they did. You know, it's also a result of giving ourselves to such things, like Timothy did. Let's look at 1 Timothy for a moment. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, and there in verse 15, we're told, Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that by profiting may appear to all. So we can see, as Timothy said here, as Timothy is an example for us, result of giving ourselves to these things, we will have a transformation that others will see in us. Another line in the song says, Thou soon shall be fitted for service above. So we, were, we can receive the blessing of being prepared for a greater service. You know, for, you know, we will serve God in heaven. We know that. And in the New Jerusalem, we, we, we read that in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 15. You know, indeed, we will reign with Christ and God forever. And what a blessing that will be. We find that in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 5. So being able to achieve or receive these blessings, isn't that even more motivation for us to take the time to be holy? Well, friend, brethren and friends, I appreciate you listening, being attentive today. And now I'd just like to kind of wrap up the lesson, wrap, we'll wrap up the lesson. And what we need to remember is that once again, we need to take time. We know the world is very busy. The world rushes on and we can get swept up in it and let things of this world come before God. And we cannot let that happen. So we need to remember that we need to make it a priority to take time to be holy. You know, our time in this life is very short, as we said, it's but a vapor. So we must have our priorities straight. We must have them in the correct order. We cannot let things of this world come before God. Another question I'll ask is, are you taking the time? Indeed, are you making time? We can't just say we're going to take time. We need to make time, make a conscious effort to set time aside to be holy, to spend time alone with God in prayer and in the word through study and meditation. We also need to spend time with others in fellowship and in service and helping our fellow man as we have opportunity. You know, and brethren and friends, we must take time if we desire to experience the blessed life that Jesus offers to us. And I think we all want that. And we also need to take time so we can become more 
like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in how we live our lives and how we act and conduct our lives. So, you know, I hope that this song, Take Time to Be Holy, whenever we sing it going forward, will always remind us of the need to slow down and to do those things so crucial to our spiritual growth and happiness. And I hope this has been beneficial for you. I will ask the question, have you taken the time to respond to the gospel of Christ? Let's look at one last scripture, which we're all very familiar with, in the book of Mark. In Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, and it says there, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So I will ask you once again, have you taken the time to respond to the gospel of Christ? If not, what are you waiting for? As we've already said today, life is so short. We, know, we Nobody knows how much time we have left upon this earth. Anybody could pass at any time. So we must be prepared so we can be with God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I will beg you to take the opportunity you have. If you need to study with the, upon the word, we certainly are willing to help you with that. You can contact the elders and Vic or Brian or any of the men of the congregation. We would be happy to sit down and study with you and help you so that you are able to know Jesus, to know the good news, and be able to obey the gospel and do God's will and become a child of God. That is our hope and prayer for you. So please don't let this opportunity pass. Take advantage of it and make sure you're right with God. Let's go to God in prayer as we end this sermon today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy great and glorious and wonderful name. Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity we've had to come and study a portion of your word. And today, as we have studied upon the topic of being holy and taking time to be holy, we pray, Father, that we'll take all the things that we looked at today from your word, that we'll study upon them, we'll meditate upon them, Father, and we'll apply them in our lives and help each of us to do what we need to do to make sure we're taking the time through prayer and through study of the word so that we can be holy, we can you know, help our brethren, we can help our fellow man, and Father, help us just to do all that we need to do to be holy and right in your eyes. Thank you so much for all you've done and how you bless us and given us your only begotten Son to be our Savior and the sacrifice for us sinners. We are so thankful for that. Father, this day, as we mentioned, we ask you to be with Miss Bobby Woods as she prepares to have surgery on Tuesday. Be with her, and we pray that you'll be with the doctor, doctors taking care of her. We pray the surgery will go well, and that she will have a speedy recovery and return back to the normal portion of health. And Father, we pray for all of those on our on our prayer list, those suffering from illnesses and different medical problems. And if it is your will, Father, we ask them to help them return back to the normal portion of health, and if not, give them comfort and peace in their last days. And Father, I ask you to be with the family of Andy Cherney, his wife Carol, and all their family and friends that during this difficult time with the passing of Andy. Please give them the strength and the comfort they need to get through this difficult time. We know, Father, that you will take care of them as only you can. Father, we're just so thankful for all you do and how you bless us. We thank you for every blessing. We thank you for allowing us to put you in mercy this day, and we thank you for hearing our prayers and answering our prayers. Father, we love you, we praise you, we give you all the glory. We ask this prayer through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, folks, and have a great day.